Hey everyone and welcome to another Xim tutorial. Today I want to show you an updated version of my guide on how to find your perfect mouse sensitivity. In my old one I left out quite a bit, plus I also optimized the whole guide in a lot of areas. So yeah, this will now be the ultimate sensitivity guide. But first off, let's quickly address the target of this video. As I mentioned in my old guide, finding the mouse sensitivity with which you have the best accuracy is not as easy as you might think. Every person has a different level of dexterity, which basically is your ability to precisely move your mouse on the mouse pad. The higher your dexterity, the higher you can set your mouse sensitivity without sacrificing any accuracy. So in order to have the best possible accuracy, your mouse sensitivity has to match your dexterity level. And that's exactly what this guide is about. That is also why you cannot just copy the mouse sensitivity of other players and expect to have the very same aim and accuracy. That person probably has a different level of dexterity, which is why you don't get the same results as that person. But don't worry, by using your own perfect sensitivity, your aim will be equal if not better. Also, this guide works with any shooter on both PC and console, plus it also supports every mouse grip style. So it doesn't matter if you palm grip, fingertip or claw grip your mouse. The following guide can be used with any grip style. Now about the structure of this video. First I will go over the necessary preparation steps that are required for this guide. Don't skip that part, it has a big influence on the outcome of this guide. After that I'll show you how to find your optimal hip sensitivity. Since a lot of games also use an aimed on sights or scope mode, I will cover that as well in the third topic. In the last part I will give you some recommendations on how to further optimize your sensitivity for certain game aspects, such as aim assist on consoles for example. But let's start with the first topic, the necessary preparation steps. The first one is about the time when you should do this guide. It has to be the first thing you do before you start with your game session. You honestly cannot do this guide during or after your game session. The reason is that you do not want to be warmed up or used to your current sensitivity. The second preparation step is about the quality of your mouse movements. Your mouse movements should not contain any stutter or pixel jumps. If you have mouse stutter then please fix that before you continue with this guide. Mouse stutter usually comes from wrong DPI or polling rate settings and will have a negative effect on this guide. I have made a dedicated video on how to get rid of mouse stutter. If you don't know how to do that then you can watch that video now. You can find a link to it in the video description. The last preparation step is about the game environment. You will need a relatively flat area without any enemies shooting at you. It doesn't matter if it's an empty campaign level, a custom game or an online server. I will use the creative mode of Fortnite for this tutorial. Once you have found a relatively flat area without any enemies, you can continue with the next topic. The second topic is about finding your optimal hip sensitivity. In your game you will now have to search for an object that has the same height as an average enemy. That can be a texture on a wall, a game object placed on the ground or in my case the top of the pyramid right in front of me. The next thing you have to do is to adjust the distance to that object. It has to be the typical distance at which you shoot from the hip in that game. And of course it will be different depending on what game you play. In Fortnite the typical distance at which I fight against enemies from the hip is rather close, so I'll move closer to the object. For a game like Battlefield I would probably use a longer distance, since close combat fights are rather rare. In that case I would probably pick the following distance. So ask yourself now, what is the typical distance at which you fight from the hip in that game? Once you have adjusted your distance, you can start with the actual sensitivity guide. For this guide I will use a starting sensitivity of 25. In theory it doesn't matter with which sensitivity you start, the outcome of this guide is always the same. Especially for PC games you might want to start with a lower value and the same applies to if you play with a lot of mouse DPI. If you want to, you can of course also use your current sensitivity as a starting sensitivity. Alternatively, you can of course also use the same sensitivity as me. You will now multiply your starting sensitivity with 2, which in my case is 50. After that, you divide your starting sensitivity by 2, which in my case is 12.5. So you end up with 3 sensitivities, 12.5, 25 and 50. The next thing you have to do is to test those sensitivities back to back to find out which of them is the best. Start with the highest sensitivity, in my case 50. Place your crosshair onto the target and start to move your character from the left to the right and then from the right to the left. You can make longer or shorter strafe movements, that's fully up to you. Just concentrate on your aiming and try to perfectly keep your crosshair on the target. Pay attention to how consistent you can keep your crosshair on the target. As you can see, I struggle quite a bit with that sensitivity, it's just way too fast for me. 
After that switch to the middle sensitivity of 25. Once again do the very same as before, strafe from the left to the right while keeping your crosshair on the target. This time I have less troubles to keep my sensitivity on the target, although there are still some inconsistencies. Overall the sensitivity feels much better than the first one though. Once your testings are done you can switch to the lowest sensitivity, in my case 12.5. Just like before do the very same movements and try to keep your crosshair on the target. This time it is really easy for me to keep my crosshair on the object. It is even easier than with the middle sensitivity, although it really feels slow. It's much slower than what I would normally play with. So take your time for each test. You can also try the other sensitivities a second time, if you are unsure which of the sensitivities gave you the best aim. Once you are done testing those three sensitivities, you have to pick the one with which you had the best accuracy. If two sensitivities were equally good, then you always have to pick the higher one. As you can guess, in my case 12.5 worked the best, so I will pick that one. Based on what sensitivity you have picked, you now have to do the following. If you have picked the highest sensitivity, you will multiply it with 1.5 and also divide it by 2. That way you will end up with 3 new sensitivities, 25, 50 and 75. If you picked the lowest sensitivity, then you do the very same, multiply it with 1.5 and also divide it by 2. Your 3 new sensitivities would then be 6.25, 12.5 and 18.75. And if you picked the middle sensitivity, you will then calculate the average sensitivities between the left and the right block. For the left one you add 12.5 and 25 together and then divide the result by 2. And for the right block you add 25 and 50 together and then divide the result by 2 again. Your new sensitivities will then be 18.75, 25 and 37.50. This calculation procedure will always remain the same now. Since I have picked the lowest sensitivity, my three new sensitivities are 6.25, 12.5 and 18.75. You might have picked a different sensitivity, which is perfectly fine. I will now do the very same as before and test those three sensitivities back to back. Once again I start with the highest sensitivity and check how well I can keep my crosshair on the target. To save some time I will now speed up my testing results. I gave all three sensitivities a fair amount of time to verify with which one I had the best accuracy. This time there was pretty much no difference at all between the lower sensitivity and the middle sensitivity. I could track the target equally well with both sensitivities. The highest sensitivity didn't really work for me though, my accuracy was quite bad. As I said earlier, when two sensitivities give you the same accuracy, then always go with a higher one. So this time I will go with the middle sensitivity of 12.5. Since it is the middle sensitivity, I will now have to calculate the average sensitivities. If you are unsure what you have to calculate now, then just go back to the picture from before. The process is the very same for the left, middle and right sensitivity. After calculating the averages I end up with 3 new sensitivities, 9.375, 12.5 and 15.625. As you can see, the difference between the 3 sensitivities gets smaller and smaller with each iteration. So once again I'll do the same as before, I place my crosshair onto the target and stray from the left to the right. This time all 3 sensitivities pretty much resulted in the same accuracy. I could barely tell a difference in terms of aim precision. Because of that I will now pick the highest sensitivity of the three, so 15.625. Since I went with the highest sensitivity I now have to multiply it with 1.5 and divide it by 2. Again just go back to the picture if you do not know how to calculate your new sensitivities. My three new sensitivities are now 7.812, 15.625 and 23.437. I tested those once again for a fair amount of time. Both the lower and the middle sensitivity gave me the same accuracy, while the higher one was kind of bad, so I'll go with the middle sensitivity. Since I now have to compute the averages, my three new sensitivities are 11.718, 15.625 and 19.531. When I switched back to the game and tested those one after another, I once again picked the middle sensitivity. There just wasn't any noticeable accuracy difference between the lower and the middle sensitivity. Once again I calculate the averages between the two sensitivity blocks and I end up with the following three sensitivities. 13.671, 15.625 and 17.578. During my testings I realize that the difference between the three sensitivities is now so small that I have troubles to tell which one gives me the best aim. That means I almost found my perfect sensitivity and only one more iteration is required. 
Once again, after some testings, the middle sensitivity worked out the best. My three new sensitivities are now 14.65, 15.625 and 16.60. When I tested those, I couldn't tell any accuracy difference at all. My accuracy was equally good with all three sensitivities. The sensitivities also felt identical. I couldn't tell any difference between a sensitivity of around 14, 15 or 16. That's why any additional iteration is no longer required, the difference will just become smaller and smaller. Since all three sensitivities gave me the same accuracy, I will go with the highest one, so 16.60. That means that 16.60 is a sensitivity that perfectly matches my dexterity level and it also is a sensitivity with which I have the highest mouse accuracy. Your new sensitivity will probably feel slower than what you normally play with and because of that it might even feel a bit unnatural. Because of that, you should stick to your new sensitivity for at least a few days before you make a final verdict. Also don't forget to watch the last topic for further adjustments and optimizations. Now of course a lot of games also have an aimed on sights mode or even a sniper mode with a scope. If you also want to use the sensitivity method with those two modes, then you have to do the following. First adjust the distance to the target, it has to be the typical distance at which you use the aimed on sights mode. In Fortnite, I only use the aimed on sights mode on longer distances, so I'll move a little bit away from the target. For sniper scopes, I would of course use an even longer distance. Now the procedure is the same as before, but your starting sensitivity is your new hip sensitivity. Since my new hip sensitivity is 16.60, I will start with multiplying it by 2 and dividing it by 2. My starting sensitivities are then 8.3, 16.6 and 33.2. Now I do the very same as always, I stray from the left to the right and concentrate on keeping my crosshair on the target. Again I will speed up my testings to save some time. The highest sensitivity didn't feel very accurate, I actually had troubles to track the object. The lower and middle sensitivity felt equally good, my aim was really great with both of them. Because of that I'll stick to the middle sensitivity. The calculation is now the same as before. Since I picked the middle sensitivity, I will now have to compute the averages. My new sensitivities are 12.45, 16.6 and 24.9. I will now test those in the very same way as before. To shorten this video, I will not show that though. My final aimed on sight sensitivity is 12.7. So now I have my perfect hip and aimed on sight sensitivity. In the last topic, I will mention some optimizations and trade-offs that some game aspects will require. The dexterity level of most people will force them to play with rather slow sensitivities, which can cause problems in fast paced games. The overall turn speed will make it difficult to quickly turn around and if you previously played with a higher sensitivity, then your new one might even feel off. In that case, you can go for a trade off, you sacrifice some of your accuracy in favor of achieving a higher turn speed. My recommendation would be to not increase your sensitivity by more than 20% though. That is a border where you will shift away too much from your perfect sensitivity. Also, only do that if you really cannot get used to your new sensitivity, even after a few days. The same can be said about aim assist. With slower sensitivities, the aim assist can become a problem. It will feel too strong and switching between targets can become difficult. In that case, you can once again increase your mouse sensitivity by up to 20%. The advantage is that due to the aim assist, your overall aim will not really suffer, since the aim assist will smooth out your accuracy reduction quite a bit. This should only be necessary for games with a very strong aim assist though. Most games play perfectly fine without any adjustments. If you have any questions about the sensitivity guide, just ask in the comments down below. Guys, if you like this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. And for the crazy guys out there, you can even become a channel member now, I'd really really appreciate that. Plus you also get a few extra benefits by becoming a channel member. Also, let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials in the comments down below. But that's about it for this video guys, thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.